Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the AVS Video Editor 8.0 tutorial. This is part 2 of the series and in this video we will be covering the details of how to properly use video effects and transitions in your videos. If you haven't seen part 1 of this series, go ahead and check that out so you can get a better feel of what we will be covering in today's video. So let's go ahead and begin talking about video effects and they can be found in the video effects tab right here. So as you guys can see, we are in our video effects tab right here. You can see a bunch of video effects that you can use. Video effects are used to change how your mainline objects look. And the way you use them is after you've imported your media, let's go into our sample folder right here. After you've imported some media and you've dragged it onto your main video line, let's go ahead and drag this clip onto our main video line. And the way you use your video effects, go into your video effects tab, you go ahead and select which video effect you want to use. We'll use the glow video effect for now. You'll click and drag it onto the video effect line, which is directly under your main video line. Once you drop it on there, you see that the video effect is automatically applied like so. So you can see that the glow video effect is the one that we used. Here is the base video right here, and then there's the glow effect right there, as you can see. Each video effect in here is very unique to itself. Each has its own settings and own properties with which you can change. But we're going to go over the basics, the essentials to how video effects work, and how you can change each individual one according to its properties. To get started talking about the video effects, we can change the duration of it once we've applied it to its line. So we can click and highlight the video effect, and you notice that a button pops up over here, which is the duration button. So we can click the duration button, we can set for how long we want it. Its default setting is set to one minute which is a little long depending on how you're using your video effect so we will set it to about 25 seconds let's go like that press ok and now our video effect is 25 seconds long you can also adjust where you want it to appear in your video by clicking and holding your video effect and you can see that the two lines on the outside of the video effect are where your video effect will be so let's go ahead and put it closer to the beginning of the video just as an example for now you can also change the duration of the video by hovering your mouse over the edges like so and you can click and drag it to shorten it or lengthen it as you please. You can also right click your effect and you can press the duration button right there as well and you can get the same option. So we can change this back to 25 seconds flat which is another option. So now we can get into the good stuff of changing how your video effects look in your video. So once you've clicked and highlighted the video effect you want to change a button will appear over here which says edit effect and if you go ahead and click edit effect a new window will pop up showing you the different ways you can edit your video effects. Now again I have to reiterate this every single video effect is different so the properties in here are going to be different for each one the settings with which you can change your video effect are different and I'm not going to go over every single video effect but just as an example we're going to go over the basics that show up every time you choose to edit a video effect so right away you probably notice in the property areas here of the video effects window you can select to apply a mask with four different options including none rectangle ellipse and polygon now the mask is used to apply the effect only to a specific area that you set so we're going to uh, go ahead and apply a mask just to show you what it does. So I'm going to go ahead and select rectangle. Now you can see the glow effect is only applied to where the borders of the rectangle fall. So I'm going to move the rectangle to only half the screen so we can see half of the video will be applied the video effect and the other half will not be applied the video effect so we can get a cool representation of what the video effect is doing. Another cool thing you can do with the mask is the polygon option. You can just draw your own shape. You can draw your own border and draw how and where you would want your video effect to appear. Just for now, we're going to stick with our rectangle and only display half the screen with the video effect. After you've messed with the mask options, if you wanted a mask option, you get to mess with the other properties that come with the video effect. So the glow video effect has this option to change the level of it. The default for the glow option is 70, so if we increase it, you notice that the right screen, where the mask is, is at 100, and it comes completely white. And if you decrease it, you notice that the effect goes lower. So you can set how you want this. And again, all the video effects are different, and I'll show you that right now. So we'll go ahead and select a new video effect, such as, let's go ahead and say, the pencil sketch video effect. We click and drag it onto our video effects line. We make sure that's highlighted, and we go ahead and press the edit effect button to change the pencil sketch option. We're going to go ahead and apply the rectangle mask so that we can show half the screen of what the video is. So here's the options that we get with the pencil sketch. We get the level option. We go ahead and change that. We can see how it is applied to our video. We get the brightness option. We can change how the brightness looks on it. We get the contrast option. We can change the contrast of the video. It just shows you that there are different options and different properties with which you can change for each video effect. So let's go ahead and go back to our glow video effect and keep on messing with this. There's one more option that I really want to show you that is applied to every single video effect and that's called the fade in and fade out. So within this video effects window, you can also set the fade in and fade out areas to your effect by using the slider under the preview area, which is right here. To begin your fade ins and fade outs, this cursor right here, if you hover your hand over this little arrow pointing down, you can click and drag it to where you want your fade in to be. So let's say we want our fade in to be about five seconds long. You can see it's five seconds long by this timestamp right here. Our cursor is sitting at five seconds. All we gotta do is press this button right here, which is the fade in button 
And you notice that at the left screen of here, the first five seconds is now a lighter color in this time bar. And that means that your video effect will be fading in at that lighter color part. So I'll show you a quick preview. If you go ahead and press the stop button, it'll bring our cursor to the beginning of the video. And if we press play, it'll preview the video effect. So let's go ahead and press play. And you'll notice that the video effect slowly faded in for five seconds. Now I'm going to increase the level to 100 so you can better see the fade in. It'll be a little bit more dramatic. And I'm going to go ahead and mute our playback so that we don't hear the music in the background. So we press play, you see the video effect starts to slowly fade in. It slowly gets to brighter on the right side of the screen and now it is completely faded in. So which brings up the point that in this darker blue part is where 100% of your video effect is in full effect. Its full capacity is being shown in your video. Now to set your fade out, it's pretty much similar. You drag your cursor to where you want your fade out to be. So this is 25 seconds long. We're gonna make it a five second fade out, which will be right about there. 20 seconds like so, and then you just press this button over here, which is the fade out button, to set your fade out limits. So there you go. You notice the part on the end here is now a lighter color, which means that it will fade out. So if you go ahead and press play again, you'll notice that the right side of the screen begins to fade out slowly. Now you can also adjust your fade ins and fade outs by simply dragging your cursor. Again, you can set the fade in there if you want. You can set your fade out right there. If you want your fade in to be all the way over here, you would have to set your fade out to be later than your fade in obviously so there you go you can set your fade in like so and you can adjust your fade ins and fade outs by these little arrows under the cursor so if you have your mouse over those little arrows you get to adjust the fade in and fade out like so by sliding it left to right you notice that the left side of this fade in is the lighter color which is where you're logically fading in, you can set the fade in fade out like that if that's a little easier for you. So that basically covers how you use your video effects. And again, every single video effect is a little different. So we can apply the fade ins and fade outs to the pencil sketch real quick to show you how it fades in. So if we go ahead and drag this to about 14 seconds long, and we can drag this over here to be about three seconds long for our fade out. And we'll set the volume to be low. It's already set to low, which is good. Now let's go ahead and preview how our fade in works. You notice that the pencil sketch slowly starts to fade in on the right side of the screen with how we set our mask. We can turn our mask off and you can see it fading in slowly in the background. If you guys haven't seen it already on my channel, I made a tutorial series featuring every single video effect that AVS has to offer. And in that tutorial series, I feature each video effect and the properties that it has and how you can change them to how you like to see in your video. So if you haven't seen that already and you haven't checked it out, go ahead and check it out to learn a little bit more in detail about each video effect here. But that is essentially how you use your video effects in your videos. You can set your duration by highlighting the video effect you want. You can right click it and press duration. You can also right click it, press edit effect, but the button options will show up here on your timeline. Just select those and you can go from there to editing your effect. All right, so now we're going to get into the second part of the video, which is transitions. And transitions are used for your video clips to smoothly go into one another. And you can add a transition when there are two or more clips on the main video line. So let's go ahead and add a second clip onto our main video line. We'll go ahead and select this picture here of my background. We'll click and drag it onto the main video line. Now you notice right here, there are two different files on the main video line, which means that we can add a transition in between them. So we're gonna go into our transitions tab right here. And you notice right away there are a lot of transitions. I'm not going to go over every single one, but they have the same properties and they can be applied in the exact same way. Now to add a transition, you can simply click, hold, and drag it onto the main video line in between the two clips you want to transition together. So we'll add it right in between these two clips and you can see the little gray box as to where your transition will be applied. We go ahead and add it right there. The default length for your transition is two seconds, and we can view that by doing a few different ways. In my opinion, it's a little better to add your transition in what's called storyboard mode, which is this button right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and press this undo button to undo my action of adding the transition. We're gonna go into storyboard mode by clicking this button. Now storyboard mode is a little bit different than timeline mode. You can switch back to timeline mode by pressing that button again. But storyboard mode is gonna feature every single clip that's only on your main video line. It's not gonna show your video effects, it's not gonna show your text, it will only show the clips in your main video line and it will separate them out one clip at a time. What's also really helpful about storyboard mode and which goes well with transition is it shows the area in between the clips to add a transition, which I think is a little bit easier when you're editing out clips. So we're gonna go ahead and add that same transition in a little bit different way. We'll click, hold, and drag our transition right onto the area in between our two clips. And so now we can view our transition by clicking on the transition and pressing play, which is a little bit easier to see how your transition looks. So now if you wanna edit your transition, you can double click the transition that you added. You can right click it and press transition, or you can highlight it and press the transition button right here. We're gonna go ahead and highlight it and press the transition button. 
which brings up a new window where you can set your duration. So the default is two seconds. We'll change that to about 0, 0.1.5. So one and a half seconds is where we can have our du transition duration. We'll go ahead and press OK. Now we can view our transition by selecting transition, pressing play, you notice that's one and a half seconds for that transition, which is really nice. So if you guys have noticed, I added a bunch of different media files on top of our main video line. So I'm going to go back into storyboard mode and you can see all the different clips that show up on our storyboard mode. Now the reason I added all these clips to the storyboard mode is because I'm going to show you a unique way to add transitions to your videos. So if we go back into our transitions tab, if you right click any transition you get different options. So you can add or replace transition, you can apply transition to all, or you can apply random transitions which is a cool option. If I clicked apply transition to all, every single space in between each clip will get that same transition. So if we go ahead and click it, every single clip now has that burning effect transition. Now if we go ahead and right click it again, we can apply random transitions, which is a really cool option if you're doing, let's say, a slideshow or a preview of things. You can apply random transition. Now each effect has its own random transitions. So we can go back into our timeline mode and we can see how these transitions look on our timeline. So I'm going to move my scroll bar right here. I'm just going to zoom in by going into our zoom scroll bar you can see the transitions kind of play out. Now it's a little bit more difficult to work with transitions in timeline mode, which is why I recommend using transitions in storyboard mode. But if you wanted to work in timeline mode, you can see your transition right here. Now you notice on this clip, you can see where the transition is by this lighter shaded area. That is where your transition will occur in between clips. So if we go ahead and move our scroll bar slowly, we can see the transition play out. Now if we have a clip selected, so let's say we'll have this clip selected right here, the transition that's at the end of it we can edit actually. So if we go ahead and press the transition button right here, which pops up on our timeline bar, we can edit the duration like so. So we can change it to 0.75 seconds long. You can see the length of that transition now shortened up. If we have this clip selected, the transition to the right of it, or towards the end of that clip, we can change that as well. So we press the transition button again. We can change the length of this to let's say one second. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys have learned something from this video. We went over how to use video effects properly, and we went over how to use transitions properly as well. We applied our video effects and shown how to change its properties. Again, each video effect is different in its own way, so if you go ahead and select your video effect, you can press the edit effect button and change it like so. To add your transitions, again, I would recommend using storyboard mode to where you can see how your transitions look in between your clips. But guys, that is essentially it for today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you guys did, go ahead and leave a like on this video. Go ahead and subscribe and stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this series. And I will see you guys next time.